I had kind of a harrowing experience on the farm yesterday. You see, yesterday was a rather cold day here on the farm. I think the high ended up being about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. And on cold days like that, I often like to come out here and check on my animals, like around midday, just to make sure everybody's got fresh water. You know, making sure nothing's frozen. Like for example, this morning my bowl and steer water is frozen. It froze overnight. Our temperature low was five degrees Fahrenheit last night. I gotta get the ice chunks out before I add fresh water. get poop on your water. Well, anyway, when I came out here yesterday afternoon, the cattle water was fine. The cattle were good. They were doing their thing. But the problem was actually with the birds. And specifically, it was happening inside the hoop coop. And even more specifically, the problem was with my weird chickens. The weird chickens, yeah, the weird chickens. They're not like other chickens. Weird chickens, yeah, the weird chickens. They're not like other chickens. The weird chickens, yeah, the weird They're chickens. They're not like other chickens. Weird chickens, yeah, the They're weird not like chickens. Other chickens. How you doing this morning, baby V? Good to see ya. How's my little cutie? Oop. I think I spooked her. <laughs> She's warming up to me though. She's still a bit skittish, but she's definitely warming up to me. How's it going, Annabelle? You look like you're doing good. Everybody looks like they're doing good today. I'll probably end up coming out here again with the honey wagon later today and scooping up some poops. Good morning, large white farm dogs. How are you guys doing this morning? Hi. You see, here on our farm, we have two types of chickens. We have the regular chickens, which look just like regular old chickens. And then we have the weird chickens. And the weird chickens are, I don't know, I guess kind of weird. That's rich coming from a man wearing a bear hat. A viewer sent it to me and I don't know, I just thought it was kind of funny. And if you guys are curious about the sourcing of this one, I can attest that it is 100% genuine artificial fake bear head. My weird chickens are like smaller than my regular chickens. At this point, they're all silky chickens, meaning they have a very different type of feather, as well as the fact that they're often a lot smaller and more fragile than my regular sized chickens. You know, particularly because we're a farm here in Vermont, my regular sized chickens are big, hardy, dual purpose, winterized breeds. Nah, we're not cold, we're just chickens. Which is definitely not how I would describe the weird chickens. bad aim this morning. Even though there's barely any snow on the ground, you can see over here that the entire bird area, even like down around here, is all pure ice. Which is why for safety's sake, I'm gonna put on my crampons. Abby, don't try to knock me over, girl. <laughs> now I can walk on the ice and not have to worry about slipping. Come on, Abby, try me now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want some love, too? Come here, buddy. Yeah. Ooh, who's my Toby dog? Yeah, you're my Toby dog. Yeah, yeah. Morning, birds! So, yes, here you can see an assortment of my regular-sized chickens. Everybody looks all happy and warm in here. The greenhouse really keeps everybody nice and toasty. Release the Quacken! Ducks, why are you still staying inside? The chickens never really have a problem with the ice. It's a little bit more tricky for the ducks and geese. Well, I'm totally getting distracted from this story. But what happened was around midday yesterday, I came outside to just check on the birds, make sure they had fresh water, and just make sure everything was okay. But when I came out here, I saw a sight that made my heart drop.
What the hell happened to you? Yes, bet the weird chicken was frozen solid. And now you'll probably notice here, my entire weird chicken coop is open and empty. That's because I never locked it up last night. Oh, but it does look like some gal came in here and left me an egg this morning. You always must avoid rapid temperature drops when it comes to any ducks, geese, or chickens. It can absolutely kill them. So far this winter, it has been a horrible winter for the weird chickens. Right at the start of the winter, we lost Rosie, who was my oldest and favoritest weird chicken. And then just the other week, Rosie's daughter, Rosette, passed away too. And so to have all of that happen to Bet was just heartbreaking for me. And deep down, I was feeling like it was entirely my fault. I mean, in years past, I have traditionally kept my weird chickens inside this shed in the winter, keeping them separate from the rest of the flock. But I had this new chicken coop that I was using for the weird chickens that I started using in the summer months, and I decided they would probably be okay if I just moved that into the hoop coop and let them coexist with all of the other birds, because it's actually warmer inside the greenhouse than it actually is in like that shed. And while I can just feel bad about Rosie's death being something that was out of my hands, and I was legitimately starting to wonder if Rosette's death was my fault and I needed to do something different. Finding Bet in this frozen condition left me feeling like, oh gosh, I acted way too slow and this is all my fault and now I'm going to lose yet another weird chicken. And so quite honestly, with the death of Rosette, she is the one that I worry about the most. So I'm not entirely sure what exactly happened to Bet, but this is my best theory. You see, <laughs> Bet is a little bit of a helpless chicken and she's oftentimes getting trampled or knocked over by the other birds. It's not like they're trying to attack her, but she just often is in the way, and they're not going to give her the courtesy of stepping around her. And so my theory is that Bet was trying to get a drink of water from one of our water drinkers, and either a duck or a goose or another chicken probably knocked her into the water, and she got covered in water, that water soaked into her feathers, and it started to freeze because it was so cold yesterday. And that's why I was pulling large clumps of ice off of Bet's feathers. What the hell happened to you? Even though my instinct was to like wrap her in a warm blanket and put her in front of a air dryer and try to get her dried off inside, I was very much scared about what that actually could do to her. You never want to give them rapid changes in temperature. Like you don't want to take a bird outside and bring them inside or vice versa when you have extreme temperature differences. And so instead what I did was I actually took one of the plates that I usually use for brooding baby chicks or goslings and I plugged one of those in because there is actually electricity inside this shed and I set her up inside the shed hoping that would be the thing that could save her. And over the course of the afternoon after she buddied up with the brooder plate, all of the water started to melt and dry off of her and she seemed to do much better. And I decided to take two of my other weird chickens, Mr. Frizzle as well as Lavender Brown, so my two weirdest other chickens, and I moved them into the shed with her last night. And so they all have spent the night in there. And so let's go in there and check on them and see how they're doing. Good morning, weird chickens. Oh, hey, how's everybody doing? Here's Lavender, there's Mr. Frizzle, Here's my girl Betty Poop. You've completely dried off. You're looking so much better. So yeah, here's that brooder plate I was describing. You know, I would say it feels warm to the touch, but it's not hot. Like I could keep my hand here all day. And so I will genuinely credit that brooder plate for saving my girl Betty Boop's life. Now I will admit, I feel kind of bad about the condition of this shed. I actually have been meaning to clean it. You know, the last batch of birds that was living in here were my teenage chickens and when I moved them into the hoop coop, I never bothered to clean it out because I wasn't gonna need it again until April when I started to hatch out my own birds. And so I just kind of put that chore off. Oh dear. The door was a little frozen. All right, here's some food. And here's just a little bit of water. Betty Boop, I don't want you to try to go swimming in here. All right, Abby, come on inside. I want you to have a little bit of time with the birds because these are our most fragile birds. I want to see how you do with them. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is not my day. <laughs> the rake just snapped in half. Oh. <sighs> Eve. I gotta admit, these fresh shavings make it just smell divine in here. I love that smell. And typically what I'll do with the old bedding is just spread it out here in this yard to let it compost more. Abby, don't pee in there. Oh, come on. Oh, Abby, what am I gonna do with you? You know, I completely had the intention of taking you guys in there and doing like a little Q&A with the dogs while like sitting in the bedding. But thanks to Lady Abington, that idea has been ruined. Eh, I still love you, even though you're weird and gross. Now I do have a surprise for them. Got some dried minnows, let's see if they like this. Chook, 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 chook. Chook, you want some minnows? Maybe the barn cat would like some. Pablo, Jenny, who wants a fish? Got some dried minnows, you want one? You wanna try it? What do you think, Jen? <laughs> You're just going full throttle there, huh, girl? <laughs> Jenny's so vicious, watch her just eat right from the bag. You're a savage, Jenny, you are a savage. <laughs> Pablo Barncat's getting a little jealous. Pablo, come here. Come here, Pablo. You want to try one? Oh, yeah. The barn cats love these minnows. Toby Dog, would you like to try a minnow? Here. Try one. Toby's always so cautious when he eats his food. Nope, he didn't even want it. <laughs> you want a second one? You didn't even eat the first one. All right. All right, Abby. Sit. Good girl. But I don't think either of the dogs like him nearly as much as the cats do. Ginny doesn't have anything to figure out. She knows it all. <laughs> 